Chapter 5 The next day, Leonard and Red were walking down Main Street together. Red was eager to introduce his team to Leonard, starting with Bomb. Oh man, you're going to love this guy. Not the smartest bird in the tree, but what he lacks in smarts, he makes up for in firepower. The only slightly awkward thing, Bomb was in jail. Earlier in the day, Bomb was getting some lunch in a restaurant. The waiter was kindly grinding some fresh pepper onto Bomb's meal when a little bit went up in Bomb's nose, causing him to sneeze, which caused him to explode. Even a simple child's birthday horn could set Bomb ablaze. Terror could strike even when Bomb was at his most vulnerable. If that cop hadn't knocked onto, on, on the porta potty door, Bomb would have never, never ended up in jail, charged with disorderly explosions, which he can't help. Bomb was so bored in his jail cell, it felt like he had been bouncing the ball off the cell wall for ages. We're busting you out, a voice shouted at Bomb. Surprised to see Red and Leonard, Bomb couldn't help it. He exploded. The cell wall fell down, revealing that Bomb's role in the Birds and Pigs United team was the explosives expert. The three of them went to Chuck's house. This guy's so fast he can beat time itself in a foot race, Leonard told, Red told Leonard. Red began pressing Chuck's doorbell and called out, Hey Chuck, we're putting a team together. And I think we're on it, Bomb added. Inside the house, Chuck woke up at the sound of Red starting to push the doorbell. He went into super speed mode. Lightning quick, Chuck sprang out of bed, made coffee, made some toast and a PB&J, milked the cow, drank the milk, taught a high-powered spin class, and finally curled his eyelashes. <clears throat> Just as Red removed his finger from the doorbell, he felt a tap on his shoulder. It was Chuck standing behind him in full military gear. I'm in, Chuck declared, a huge smile plastered on his face. Chuck was now part of the team as the Speed Demon. <laughs> Great, said Red said. The heist team was coming along nicely. The group then went to Mighty Eagles Mountain to, to add another team member. Now, this guy is kind of a ding-dong, but he's the only eagle we know, Red explained to Leonard. Mighty Eagle was something of a legend around Bird Island. Many a myth had been spun about his heroism, but Red knew that myths were exactly what they were. His first-hand experience with Mighty Eagle was, was that he wasn't quite so brave as he would have, as he would have others believe. Nor was he that mighty. They found the aging raptor relaxing in one of his lakes of wisdom. After explaining to him what they needed his, that they needed his help, Mighty Eagle was intrigued. You've come to the right eagle. Tell me more, he instructed grandly. Chuck handed Mighty Eagle a file labeled Top Secret. Chuck Top secret, Chuck began. It's a really exciting mission to a place called Eagle. Eagle Island? Mighty Eagle interrupted him, his eyes practically bulging out of their, his sockets. Yeah, so you, Chuck started to reply, but before he could get through his, with his sentence, Mighty Eagle was gone. Heard of it. The group watched as Mighty Eagle ran away as fast as he could. He was terrified. Red laughed nervously. That's our uh, fearless warrior. Leonard did not look convinced. Unflustered, Red did his best to focus on the rest of the group by talking them into Mighty Eagles, by taking them into Mighty Eagles Cave and showing them a file labeled the mission. Okay, so now we just need to figure out how this volcanic super weapon works. We're going to need some kind of engineering wizard brainiac. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Ooh! Chuck was so excited he started to sing. 
Ooh. Chuck, you obviously have something you want to say or sing. I have just the guy. It's a girl, Chuck said excitedly. It's my sister, Silver. She goes to Avian Academy. Top of her class, she would be perfect. And so off they went to the Avian Academy. The Avian Academy was the closest bird island had to an Ivy League university, where the students were, le were living the typical student life. Red, Chuck, Bob, and Leonard walked through the campus, where they saw students playing frisbee, studying, noodling on an acoustic guitar, and rushing to class. I mean, we just thought she was weird, you know? Before I knew it, she had skipped four grades, won a Junior Engineer of the Year award, and then got a scholarship here at the Avian Academy. Chuck said proudly, "Perfect. That's just what we. That's just what we're looking for." Red said, "You are absolutely going to love her." Chuck said before adding a, in a threatening tone, "But don't love her too much. That's my sister, Red." His tone became demonic. Or I'll crush every bone in your body! Chuck then zipped off, leaving the others to share a look that said, That was very weird. I'll say, <clears throat> Inside the engineering lab at the a Aviary Academy, Silver was giving a presentation to her fellow students about a contraption she had built. She flipped the switch on the machine, and it whirred to life. With a combination of over 30 silk wire and cotton-based threads spun together, I now present to you, Super String! Silver proudly declared as she held up her creation. As she looked around, expecting thunderous applause, Silver was surprised to see her classmates were either asleep or extremely bored. More like, soup, more like stupid string, one of them heckled. I know what you're thinking, Mike, Silver continued, undeterred. You're like, what's so super about it? Great question. Silver started to demonstrate her super string. The string was wrapped around a giant boulder. On Silver's command, the boulder was easily lifted by the string. It was very impressive. How about that, that it's able to withstand... Will stand the pull of 40,000 more pounds than any other string. Ring! The class bell cut her off. Known to bird kind, or pig kind for that matter. Silver sighed as the students cleared out of the room. Just then, a familiar red wing tapped her on the shoulder. Sup, sis? Silver spun around to see her brother, Chuck. Chuck! Silver! After a big hug, they both started talking at the exact same time. I'm so happy to... They both tried again, but the same thing happened. It's really... They were they were still speaking in unison. Great to... They both reached out at the same time and tapped each other at the same time while calling, Jinx! Since they did everything at the same time, neither was actually Jinx. They both tried again, but this time Silver dodged da Chuck, Chuck's tap, managing to tap him right on the chest. Jinx! One, two, three, I win! Silver said triumphantly. You can't speak until someone says your name! Just then, Red, Leonard, and Bomb walked into the room, looking for Chuck. Hello? You in here? Red asked as he scanned the room. Red was surprised when he spotted Silver with Chuck. She was the nosy bird from the speed dating. Red did a double take to make... She was Chuck's sister? You? Said Red. You? Silver replied before turning to Chuck. You know him? Chuck pointed to his sealed beak, reminding his sister of the jinx she put on him. Oh, okay, Chuck, I unjinx you. Yeah, this is one of my best buddies, Red. And these are the guys. Guys, this is Silver, the greatest kid sister in the world. Well, I'm not exactly a kid anymore, Chuck. Chuck pulled Silver in for, for a noogie, 
Will you always be my kid sister? Okay, Chuck, she implored. Hey, everyone. You know, I just don't think this is going to work. It's just that I'm not sure that you're going to be compatible with the team. Red said snidely. Boom, how does that feel? Silver, unimpressed, slowly blinked at Red before walking right past him and straight to Leonard. Oh, wow, it is such a pleasure to meet, Silver started saying to Leonard, but turned to Red and in interjected, Not you. Before turning back to Red and finishing with, But you! I've never met a pig before. Your technological ex achievements are amazing. May I shake your hook? Why, thank you. I like her, Leonard declared, smiling proudly at the compliments. And this has to be bomb, Silver said to the large bird. Yeah, how'd you know? Bomb asked. Because you have a fuse coming out of your head. So cool. Kaboom! So I hear you're some kind of engineering wizard or whatever, Red said unenthusiastically. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but Silver said as she held up an award that read, Dean's Distinguished Achievement Award. Silver pointed to a photo of her that was on, on it. Wait, who's that? She asked coyly before revealing dozens of other awards. And why is she all over these achievement awards? Silver's role in the team? The Brainiac. The kid's amazing, right? Chuck bragged. I'm not a kid anymore, Chuck. Silver reminded him again. Chuck wasn't listening. Doot doot! Tickle train! Arriving at Sister Station! No, Chuck, no! I'm a serious academic! Silver protested, but it was too late. Chuck attacked his little sister with tickles until she gave in. And they began, and they began roughhousing and tickling each other. It went on long enough that the rest of the team started to get uncomfortable. Oh wow, look at this! Two grown birds tickling each other, Red observed. Far out at sea, the hatchlings, Zoe, Vivi, and Samson, were still trying to catch up to the eggs they had accidentally sent into the ocean. While paddling their raft towards the eggs, which was just a few feet away, the trio sang a sea shanty to help encourage themselves. We're sailing into the ocean. We must row, row. The eggs are in our sights, so we must go, go. We'll get them out before our parents. No, no. And save the day like Red, a real hero, hero. Vivi and Samson reached out and grabbed the eggs from the water. Woohoo! We did it! Zoe cheered. That was so easy. Yeah, a little too easy, actually. Vivi agreed. Normally when things are this easy, something dramatically unexpected setback occurs. I don't get it. Well, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's sort of like... But before... But Vivi didn't get to finish her explanation. Something started rising up of a... Rising up out of the water from underneath their raft and lifted them into the air. Up! Uh, Puck from a blowhole sent the egg soaring high into the sky. Beneath the raft, the hatchlings could now see a whale was below them. Like that, said Vivi. The three hatchlings looked up to the eggs in the, up to the eggs in dismay as they shot up far into the sky. Are you freaking kidding me? Zoe gruffed.